Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to continue our exploration of water. We're going to suck out all of the water from our planet Earth and take it for a spin and then reintroduce it to other planets just to see what happens. Welcome to What The Math. And the idea for this video actually came from one of you wonderful viewers, uh, I think this was a person by the name of Dylan Thomas, thank you so much Dylan, and it's like, actually a pretty good idea, so he suggested, you know what, why don't you just take all of the water, like, like you did in the previous video, and then reintroduce it to Mars, but I, I thought why not go further, why not actually take all of this water, and I hope I remember the number here, the total mass of water is 1.35 times 10 to the power of 21 kilograms. That's quite a lot of water. And we're going to basically reintroduce it to all of the terrestrial planets just to see um, what they actually look like, how they transform, and is essentially what would happen if uh, all of this water was one day deposited on these planets. Now we're going to obviously start with Mercury. And one of the easiest ways of doing this is essentially taking Halley's Comet, which is mostly water, and then launching it and missing it completely. Not exactly what I was what I was trying to do here. Anyway, that was just a test. Uh, let's try this again. So here is Haley's Comet. I'm going to take it, pause the game, launch it, and then go into materials and essentially just change everything to water. And look at that, it actually changes into this like mysterious water bowl that you can use uh, to uh, kind of see through. It's almost like a water cloud. But we're also are obviously going to change this number to one point, let's just say 1.5 four because I think some would be lost to the um, I, to the fact that we're so close to the Sun it's actually going to evaporate to the 21st power so there we go there is our water bowl and it actually look at that, it almost looks planet like too very very interesting uh, now it's uh, technically not the right size right now so it's, it is going to increase in size there it is there it goes uh, and this, it's already it started to lose some of its mass because it's so close to the sun. It's basically boiling away because the sun uh, radiation is kind of taking away a lot of this. But uh, by the time it gets to Mercury, it should be just the right amount. There we go, 139. It might actually be even more, a little bit more than, than I thought it would be. But here's our collision. And here comes all of the water from planet Earth to Mercury. Yay. All right. So let's see what happens to this planet. Obviously, first of all, we're going to have a very large explosion. We're going to have shockwave fragments falling down everywhere. But then, let's check how much has been added. 1.38 times 10 to the 21st power. Perfect. Then we're going to just wait a little bit until Mercury cools down. And essentially, this is actually what did happen about uh, 3 to 4 billion years ago when the solar system had a lot of different asteroids flying around, a lot of different comets, and a lot of the bombardment happened to all of the terrestrial planets, including Mercury, which is why it does have so many um, collision spots, craters on it. And um, many, many different asteroids did bring water to Mercury, but guess what? It evaporated. That's right. All right, the temperature here is a little bit too high. We're going to manually lower it. Let's start with 200 degrees. And here comes the original face of Mercury with all of the multitude of craters. And we can actually increase this a little bit. It's going to go a little bit faster. And let's now decrease it to 100 degrees, which is the boiling temperature of water. And look at that. Look at this beauty. It actually did change for a little bit. Okay, I'm going to increase, decrease it further. And we're just going to wait for all of this fire to subside just to see what uh, the face of Mercury would look like if it did have all of the Earth's water on the surface. And look at that. It's basically entirely covered in water now. That's awesome. So, as you would expect, because Mercury is much smaller in size, transporting all of the water to Mercury would make it a water planet. But not for very long, because as soon as the temperature increases here, the water would basically start boiling away and create the old surface with most of the water just making its way to the outer solar system and possibly outside of the solar system because of the solar radiation. And actually there is, look at that, there's like these mountains that are sticking out. I don't really know what exactly this is, but we're going to see as soon as everything starts evaporating. So more islands appearing. What is that? Is that a very large region of Mercury that we haven't seen before? It's some sort of a dark spot here. So we're, I think we're about to see it in a few seconds as soon as... There we go. Okay, so yeah, that just looks like a crater or something. Very large black crater. 
but as the temperature increases, obviously more and more water will disappear, and at some point there will be nothing left. Yay! All right, next is Venus. And here comes the second collision. Uh, our water bowl is about to increase in size. It's going to be very, very large compared to what it used to be. And it's going to collide with Venus and bring all of the water from Earth to Venus. Hopefully we don't, don't lose too much of it in the process. It's smoking toward Venus. That's actually pretty beautiful. Check this out. It's literally just covering Venus in this water, water vapor smoke. Water smoke, water vapor, whatever it is. Boom. Okay. Uh, so this is what would happen to Venus. Look at that. The atmosphere actually dissipated and disappeared to the point where you can actually see the surface. And you do have these lakes, I guess. You, you would call them lakes, kind of, in a sense, because they're not true water. Uh, the temperature here is so high that the water is actually in plasma format. Uh, it's not uh, solid. It's not liquid. It's not... Um, gas either it's literally plasma which is very similar to what fire is and which is very similar to what sun is made up of uh, so that's very interesting but anyway if i advance time here to the point where venus starts cooling down what you would see is it would actually return to its original form but we don't want to see that we want to see what where's uh, what, what does the actual water look like and actually i'm going to increase this just a little bit because we did lose some of the water in the process uh, it's going to be 34 and let's just decrease the temperature to about 50 degrees and see what the surface is going to look like. And check this out. It does return uh, the at atmosphere, I guess. And we can kind of remove that by basically removing the atmosphere. But this is what uh, the surface of Venus would look like with all of the water from Earth. You do have these relatively large islands, but no ma massive continents, no major land masses. Most of it is basically just covered in water. And uh, it's all hidden behind this thick layer of 91.2 atmospheres of essentially carbon dioxide. And with time, all of the water disappears again because it just evaporates and is kind of thrown away uh, by the solar radiation into the outer solar uh, system again. All right, so that's Venus. Next is Mars. And here comes the bowl heading toward Mars. And collision and 3, 2, 1, boom. All right, that didn't really work as I planned, but here we go. Uh, so right away, you can see the Mar Martian surface actually warmed up to the point where all of the water is actually just a liquid ocean on the surface. That's because there's a combination of uh, temperature of relatively high, actually, 580 degrees Celsius. And, of course, the fact that we now brought all of the water from Earth here. Now... It's obviously going to evaporate for now until the point where Mars actually regains its original lower temperature. Now, there's going to be maybe a few months where it is going to have this liquidy water, but then it's all going to disappear again. And in real life, it actually wouldn't even have liquid water because here there's just unfortunately not enough um, surface pressure. For water to actually stay liquid, Mars would have to have much, much higher um, atmospheric pressure, which it doesn't really have. But uh, a collision of this sort would actually possibly bring a little bit of atmospheric pressure, especially if there's like things like um, carbon dioxide in there and possibly even oxygen. Uh, so it might have temporary atmosphere, but because it really has no way to protect that atmosphere from solar radiation, there's really no magnetic field whatsoever. As you can see, if I turn on magnetic field, there's absolutely nothing. Uh, all of this atmosphere would disappear, and then all of the water would disappear as well. But we're about to see what the liquid water on Mars looks like. I'm going to lower this to 50 degrees Celsius, and here we go. My guess is that it's going to be covered in water completely. Uh, and possibly there's some few islands here and there. It looks absolutely beautiful, though. This is actually what, would, what a terraformed Mars would look like if we figure out how to actually preserve the atmosphere and possibly bring the water to it. Uh, so we do know that it had these huge oceans before and we do know that it did have um, a lot of liquid activity for the first at least uh, several hundred million years. But we also know that it all disappeared. Uh, there's a video I made previously where I talked about the signs of two very large mega tsunamis we've discovered on Mars. You can check it out. Um, I think the link is right here. And uh, that video does kind of explain scientific evidence that Mars used to have this really, really huge ocean. 
and now it doesn't so there's that anyway so that's kind of all i wanted to take a look at but just for, just for fun well there's a there's really no point of doing this to gas giants because they're just way too massive this would not even budge them so like if i actually look at the smallest gas giant in our or i guess ice giant in our solar system which is uranus if i do this to it if i actually launch an object at it and it actually collides with uranus um the thing is that because uranus already has so much water and so much other stuff there's really nothing that's going to change here it's it's it literally doesn't even budge this planet it's way too big but it would be fun to see what would happen if we did this to pluto Let's find Pluto and let's do that to it, even though technically Pluto already has a very, very large amount of water on the inside. It doesn't really show in this game, but we do know that it does have a relatively large ice sheet on the surface and possibly even bigger liquid ocean underneath. But let's see what would happen if all of this water from Earth decided to make an appearance and uh, collide with Pluto. And here we go, here comes our water bowl, it's actually almost as big, possibly not as massive, it's about 10 times less massive, but just as big, or, or maybe a little bit smaller than Pluto, and I'm guessing it's going to cause a very major catastrophe on the surface here. Let's see what happens, uh, Pluto is about to receive a very large present from, from Earth, uh, and it's actually much bigger than, than its uh, companion, um, Charon. And look at that. Look at how beautiful this is. Holy cow. All right. So that is essentially the size of water on our um, on the surface of our planet Earth uh, colliding with the rest of the solar system, including Pluto. Now, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And thank you so much, Dylan, for suggesting this. It's actually a pretty cool idea. I'm not sure why I didn't think of this earlier. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video with your friends. And also like this if you liked it. And look at that, we have liquid ocean on the surface now. But that's because I made the temperature relatively uh, acceptable. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll talk about something else, space, science, or math related, or possibly something completely different. Thank you for watching, I'll see you later, game you later, and as always, bye bye.